how to get the best out of your images. Hello, my friends, how are you doing? Today, I wanna show you two tricks to improve the quality of your AI renders. So the first one is negative embeddings. What that means is that you have an embedding that is trained on bad things on how the image should not look, and then you put that into your negative prompt to hopefully help you get better results. This can apply to the art style, to the prompt, to the hands, so it helps you fix your image beyond what you can do with the prompt. So you can see here in my negative prompt that down here I'm using, for example, bat minus artist. I'm using bat minus artist minus anime. I'm using bat prompt version. I'm using bad hands down here. Now for the two that are addressing artists, this also has a buy at the start, as if you would say buy artists so on so, but this is trained on images you don't want to have. And you simply go to the pages of these embeddings and you download that into your automatic 1111 folder and in there into embedding. So you can see I've quite a lot of them in here already. Now, the only thing you need to do to use them is you can look up their name here and then you use that name minus the dot PT at the end. You don't need that inside of the negative prompt, but with these pointy brackets around them. So that's all you need to do. And here you can see at the end, I have colon 0 0.8. This is the weight that is applied to that. Often a lot of them work good with 0 0.8. Here you can see several versions that I have rendered of this image with the same seed with different negative embeddings, but you can also see that this quite changes the image a lot, but the quality still improves. Now, the next trick I want to show you has to do with upscaling. And as you know, I'm using image to image for upscaling. But there I found a trick to get the last bit of quality out of the image to make it even better. So this trick works in several steps. First of all, of course, you want to render an image that you like down here, and then you send it over to image to image with this button here. When we're over here, what you want to do is to double the resolution. You can see that my initial resolution is 512 by 768. Now that I have doubled it, it is 1024 by 1536. This also has restore phase turned on. In this case, I'm using DPM++ SDE Keras for the rendering. I'm using 20 steps. You can use the same seed, but you can also use a random seed. I'm setting the denoise strength to 0 0.25. So it is very similar, but also allows for a little bit changes. So we have the ability for the AI to introduce new details. Now here comes the important thing. When this first rendering has finished, you right click on that and you copy that image. Then you go to any kind of software for photo editing, like for example, GIMP, Affinity Photo, Photoshop, whatever you have on your drive, and you open this up. In Affinity Photo, you can go File, New from Clipboard, so that this will open up and you don't even have to save it. Now, here's the thing. When I scroll into the image, you can see already that quality is pretty good but it is blurry. So what we're going to do here is you go up here to filters and then you go to sharpen, unsharpen mask. And what you want to select here is one pixel, one pixel, 0%. When we look here at the before and after, you can see that this sharpens the image and also brings out more of the initial texture in the image. For example, when you look here at the clothing, but also when you look here at the face texture. So apply that to the image and then you save it, export. I would highly suggest to save this as a PNG so there are no JPEG fragments when you're using that. Now we are going back to automatic 1111 you delete this original image, then you click here and you load the new sharpened image in the higher resolution. Now, here's a very important thing. Because the face already has been optimized and because face restore will also blur the face a little bit, we will turn off face restore now, but the rest of the settings will stay the same. Now, here I have a comparison between the original upscaling 
And this is now the new version that has been rendered by Automatic 11.11 from the sharpened version. So when I click before and after, you can see that this actually introduces better, clearer details. Now this is also especially visible when we look here at the details of the fabric, at the details of the background of our foliage in here. Let's go down here for the clothing. And also here, you can see that the clothing and even the armor has more detail in it because the AI has more information to work with. One thing you have to look out for is over sharpening, especially on the edges. And we can see here on the right side of the hut that there is a little bit of this bright edge going on. So that can be problematic. In that case, I would highly suggest that you have both images still loaded on top of each other, and then you can simply delete that part from the image. So when I take the eraser here with a small size and I go over that edge, I can delete that part of the image. So this will restore the original part. Now, of course, as you can see, the original part is blurrier, but now I don't have that highlighted edge. But while you're sharpening, already you want to look for these highlighted edges. If they appear, you want to try to set your sharpening to a lower degree so it doesn't sharpen as much. You can render this more often if you want to, to still get the same kind of quality. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.